Welcome back to the Tomarosa. Today we are going to talk about seasonal dairying and why we do it. Before we talk about seasonal dairying, we'll talk about um, year-round dairying. Uh, on most dairy farms, they'll have cows that will be bred and calve year-round so that they can milk them year-round. A cow's gestation period is nine months, just like a human. And dairy cows are usually bred once a year. So what that means is once they have a baby and start making milk, uh, they're going to be bred about three months later to keep on that yearly cycle. We dry off the cows a few months before they're due to calve to give them a little bit of a break uh, before their next lactation. On most dairy farms, they stagger these calvings and dry periods so they have a continual flow of milk year round. But we're a seasonal dairy and so what we do is we group our calvings together in the spring to mimic nature and that also means that there's a few months of the year where our entire herd is not producing milk. Why would somebody want to do a seasonal dairy? Why would Rainy want to eat my coat? There's various reasons for wanting to have a seasonal dairy. For us, the main reason is we want to pair uh, when we have the best forage and when the cows are calving and they have the highest energy needs. Another reason for us is we like having a little break. You know, if we're not milking for two months, it gives us a chance to uh, do some maintenance in the barn. You know, you can tear apart milking equipment because you don't have to worry about it being ready again in 12 hours. And uh, you can focus on uh, some other farm tasks that you've not been getting to because you've been busy milking. Seasonal dairying, even though we get the same amount of milk as if we staggered it, does save us money as well because we're using less chemicals. There's two months where we're not using detergents, acids, or sanitizers. Uh, it saves us energy because we're not having to heat water to wash our milking equipment or cool the milk. And it does save us labor. Uh, we don't have the milking chores. We can get caught up on other things. Some of you may wonder, what about the customers? First off, we made sure that our customers knew we were a seasonal dairy. Many of those who love our milk seek us out because of the way we farm and are very understanding. Of course, it does mean that they may have to buy milk at the grocery store, but for many of them, that is just motivation to find us as soon as we start making milk again. Another great benefit to seasonal dairying is you have seasonal calving. That allows you to get into a mindset of the calving season. You're looking for the same things. You're monitoring them during a very crucial life cycle of the cow. You can also manage the calves as a group, which is easier than if you have calves of multiple ages. And we find that that has been very beneficial for us on our farm. A challenge to seasonal dairying can be actually getting them all in the same season. Your breeding program has to be pretty on point uh, because you have a window where you're trying to get all your cows bred. That means that your heat detection skills will need to be pretty good, especially if you're doing AI like what we do. I would imagine if you have a bull, it's a little easier because the bull will help out with your heat detection, of course. But that is probably the main challenge for us, is just making sure everybody is bred on time within the window that we want. This year, we did really well. Everyone got bred within a 31-day window, so I don't think we could uh, do much worse than that. So here are some things to think about if you are interested in seasonal dairying. If you have never had your cows calve within about a month, you might want to make sure that you're prepared for that. You might need uh, a couple more supplies and different, if you're bottle feeding, you know, bottles for the calves. With seasonal calving, you know, depending on the size of your herd, you may need more facilities to handle all your calves at one time. The best part of seasonal dairying is that you're mimicking nature. Things are green, things are growing, animals around the animal kingdom are having babies, and it all seems to flow together. Some of you may be wondering, if we are a seasonal dairy, what are we going to do when we don't have any milk? I myself have had that tragic thought. So what we did was, we decided to freeze milk. Let me show you my freezer. Oh. 
Here are some bags of frozen milk. Some are in gallons, some are actually half gallons in gallon bags. This is what happened when I tried to freeze milk in my glass bottle. We tried different amounts and even when I think we were, even when we were down here it still didn't work. I think maybe it's because it tapers up. But yes. That did not work. I'm going to defrost this and I think I can use it for cooking, maybe drinking, maybe in coffee. I'm not sure. There's probably many of you out there who have much more experience at this than I do. But like most things, I'm going to try something and see how it works. So right now, we are in late February. And soon it will be calving time at the end of April going into May. So all of our cows are just bored. As you can see beyond, there's not a lot of green in our fields right now. Luckily, there's also not a heavy load of snow. So we do have winter paddocks with some stockpiled forage that they're going out and eating on. But mostly, they've been dried up now and they're just hanging out, waiting to have calves. Where are we in our uh, seasonal dairying system right now? Uh, what's it been, like a week and a half? Yeah, I haven't been in the parlor since then. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, at some point I do need to get in there and clean everything up and scrub it. Just kind of walked away after that last milking. We do have an exciting trip coming up. We're going all the way over to Seattle, which is about five hours to the west of us. Gonna pick up some supplies and uh, it's gonna be our first time away from the farm, really, I think, since we started. Darian. Yeah, yeah for, since February last year. So we're looking forward to that little break. I mean, just getting in the car and driving and you know, staying in a hotel. Of course, we are going to visit another farm, a very, very famous farm. So yeah, now I guess we'll have to have footage of that. We'll have to take video of that. But until next time, if you have any questions on seasonal daring or any suggestions, uh, leave them in the comments. We'll see you next time here on the Tom Marosa.